I like spaceships. Also, I'm wearing a hoodie and an indoor jacket inside because it's freezing cold, but it's April and I refuse to turn on the heating. Anyways, in today's video we're going to design an astromech droid. And if you don't know, astromech droids are part of the Star Wars universe. R2-D2 is an astromech droid. These little fellas, and there I will quote Wikipedia, were a type of repair droid that served as an automated mechanic on starships. Many Star Fighters relied on astromech co-pilots to control flight and power distribution systems. Now, while I disagree with the idea that small fighters should or could have hyperdrive engines in them, this is the Star Wars universe, so let's go with it anyway. Anyways, most of you know these little droids being tucked away nicely behind the cockpit of the X-Wing or Naboo Starfighter. I like the idea of having a helper that comes along with the ship, especially if we think of Queen Amidala's blockade-breaking ship and how it was repaired by these droids while escaping. I found that to be a very cool scene. Uh, my problem, however, is with the fighters. How can they do external repairs on an X-Wing or a Nubian Starfighter? Remember when Luke was stuck on uh, Dagobah uh, and R2 seemed pretty useless there? So while I love the idea, I would love to come up with an astromech droid that is a bit more functional in this video. And after all that talking, let us get started with designing. I start by designing a starship for my astromech droid. And as per usual, this process starts with doing some thumbnail sketches. In the beginning, I just wanted to go with a random generic fighter craft design, but relatively quickly in the thumbnailing process, I started bringing in some more detail and my design started veering more towards the Star Wars style. For one, I just like Star Wars and probably am very influenced by it. But I was also thinking, since I want to design an astromech droid, I might as well try and make it fit the universe it belongs to. And while I know I had some other Let's Design a Star Wars ship videos here, I thought you guys would, wouldn't mind going through the process again with me. I did start out with a not sleek, more boxy design. However, I very quickly started transitioning into a more Clone Wars type ship design, something that reminded me of the ARC-170 ships, the predecessors of the X-Wing. And since I started using this more rounded shape for a nose, I thought I might as well just try and go more organic with the shape, and that's how I ended up with my final design. Of course, looking at it now, I can see that I was channeling an N1 Naboo Starfighter because I also just saw the new ship of the Mandalorian where they just decided to turn the Naboo Starfighter into a hot rod with the engine sticking out of the hood and all. It's ridiculous, but I love it. So, I'm pretty sure that having seen that episode not so long ago, I subconsciously designed this last ship to be somewhat similar to that one. And while the top of the ship was working, I really didn't care much for the sharp underpart thing at the nose uh, and also the wings. They just didn't fit. But I thought I can use the upper body and redesign the bottom to something that is more of a heavy fighter. And having a less sleek and more robust industrial look to the bottom makes more sense that this might be a long distance uh, reconnaissance or sabotage ship. Thus, it having a hyperdrive engine would also make more sense to me. I decided that this could be some sort of homage to the Nubian Starfighter, or maybe even done by the same company, but during the Empire, they didn't have the same resources, so they tried their best to come as close as possible to the original design sensibility of Naboo, while having to use the resources that were available during the Empire's reign. As you can see, I love to go in seemingly useless detail when I'm designing. I love world building. But this actually has its uses. If you first create a world around your design and then you try to make your design fit into that world, it's going to be much easier to make design choices and to know what are the limitations of your design. So there is a reason I spend so much time designing anything other than my astromech in the video about designing an astromech. My ship is quite a bit bigger than a regular fighter ship. It has many different surfaces that my astromech will have to navigate. I wanted to be able to repair the ship in zero G, but also in high G situation. And of course, it has to fit nicely into my ship and preferably not be as exposed as our units. But before we continue, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Indoor Jackets. 
because when you're too cheap to turn on the heating, indoor jackets will come to your rescue. Buy an indoor jacket now and you will support this channel. S somehow. Now we can finally start talking about the actual droid design. But before I do that, I totally forgot to turn on the camera while I was catching the ship, so sorry about that. <laughs> also, as you can see, I have more delivery packaging that I am turning into brown paper drawings. Having the option of adding a white shading to my drawing really makes them pop much more on a brown background, so I really try to use these as much as I can. And once again, you don't need fancy, expensive paper to draw on. Okay, back to the droid. As you can see, I start out with somewhat of a spider bot. My idea is that a droid with arachnid type appendages should be able to easily crawl around the ship and do the repairs wherever it is needed. But while that is functional, spider type droids were always bigger and used in war in the Star Wars universe and also the droids I started drawing didn't really have that much of a personality. And if there is one thing that we know for sure about Star Wars is that its droids are very rich in character. They were clumsy, comical, a little over or sometimes under engineered. If you would see a droid from that universe, you would probably immediately recognize it as a Star Wars droid. And I wanted to capture that. A good example for me was BB-8 from the trilogy of movies that we don't talk about. Uh, round is cute, so I wanted to go with that, but I was missing the clumsiness, so my thought process went to what if instead of uh, arachnid limbs, it only has two arms and a floating round head, and it has to sort of crawl around on the ship when it is in outer space, pulling itself along the hull. I was thinking of something like a BB-8 combined with an Imperial probe droid, so under gravity uh, this droid could hover around and fix things with its arms while in space it could always hold on to the spaceship even when the spaceship is under thrust. And when I arrived at this final design I liked it, but it was missing something, so I decided to park the exercise for now and continue the next day with fresh eyes. And that is exactly what you have been seeing here where I switch back to regular printer paper. I was also detailing the functionality of the design a bit more. I decided to add a tool belt or exchange parts that can rotate together with one of the smaller rings around the droid's neck so that the droid can switch between the right tools for the job. Its arms should fold up so it can easily stow itself in its small compartment as well. One final touch was making its mushroom head a bit bigger. I want to emphasize the cute clumsiness in the design and I remembered the repair droids from episode 1 but also from the aforementioned Mandalorian episode. Yeah, yeah, I know, Book of Boba Fett episode, but come on, no one cared about the episodes that didn't have Mando in them. So I took the iRidge from that robot as well, and with that I returned to my brown paper to finalize our little astromech droid design. And with that done, let's talk about the most interesting part of this video, especially for me, namely, we are having a challenge. I had a leftover generic fighter craft drawing from some previous client work, and I thought it would be cool if I ask you guys to design a fitting astromech droid for this ship. Now, I wanted to keep the challenge more open, so as not to stick to the Star Wars design language, I want you to have fun with this one. Feel free to adjust the spaceship to your needs, or if you have the time and if you really want to, draw your own spaceship with a fitting astromech droid. But the deadline is midday next Sunday, April the 10th. So have fun with this and I'm curious what sort of astromech robots you will come up with. You can post your designs in the concept challenge channel in my Discord server or on Instagram with the hashtag astromech challenge. I hope you will have fun with this one and I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. That was it for this video. I hope you learned something new. Leave your comments and questions down below. I always love reading them. And as always, the most important thing is that you folks have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.